Well, greetings and welcome to our service today to celebrate Peace with Justice special Sunday and offering. We are so grateful that you have decided to join us. My name is Laura Kigweba James. I'm a part of the church and society staff. This service will be recorded and posted on our YouTube page. Also, if you'd like to follow along with the bulletin, you can click on the link that will be found in the chat. So Peace with Justice special Sunday and offering is May 30th, 2021. And this offering is co collected the first Sunday after Pentecost and it supports Peace with Justice Ministries through the General Board of Church and Society and the annual conferences. Our service today is offered to mark this upcoming Sunday's offering. In a world faced with war, violence, racism, and systems of inequity around the world, people of faith have a clear call to build peace with justice. Peace with justice is more than just the absence of war or an end to violence. As the Council of Bishops stated in the foundational document in defense of creation, the nuclear crisis and just peace, shalom is positive peace, harmony, wholeness, health, and well-being in all human relationships. It is a natural state of humanity as birthed by God. It is harmony between humanity and all of God's good creation. Today, let us join our hearts, our spirits, our minds to worship God and to seek and make visible shalom in God's world. Let us prepare our hearts for this time of worship. Will you pray with me? Abba God, thank you for liberating us from fear. Thank you for covering us with paternal love. Thank you for giving us a spirit of courage to witness to your love that crosses every boundary. Reveal to us your image in the face of each person that we encounter. Move us to extend your peace with justice to our siblings throughout your world. Open our hearts with generosity to glorify you with our gifts. In the name of Jesus, our sibling, we pray, amen. Your love has turned us 
Amen. Nations will come, all will come. I now welcome my colleague, Dr. Jesse Smith, as we uh, lead the call to worship. Please join us. Paul writes that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We are children of God and celebrate peace with justice. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of adoption. We are children of God and celebrate liberation. We are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We are children of God and celebrate our global family. Amen, amen. And now we will hear from Reverend Peace Kim with our first reading from the book of Isaiah, followed by Reverend Katie Hinman with the reading from Romans. Isaiah chapter two, verses two through four. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 So today we are blessed to be joined by Reverend Alejandro Alfaro Santiz, pastor of Trinity Las Americas United Methodist Church, located in Des Moines, Iowa. Welcome Rev Reverend Alejandro and thank you for being with us. Reverend Alejandro also serves as the Peace with Justice Coordinator for the Iowa Annual Conference. A Guatemala native, Pastor Alejandro is a second career clergy and worked previously as a cultural anthropologist. He completed his Masters of Divinity degree from Iliff School of Theology in 2013. And as a note, Reverend Alejandro will be preaching in both Spanish and English. We welcome you. Oh, thank you, Laura. So um, if you don't speak Spanish, you can you know, learn a little bit or you'll get to practice if you do speak a little bit of Spanish. Uh, si no habla inglés, puede estar practicando o estar predicando en las dos idiomas, en inglés y en español. So 
Our readings for today remind us that we are not our bodies, but we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And yet, what happens here on this planet matters. It matters so much that God became flesh in Jesus to walk in this world. Las lecturas del día de hoy nos recuerdan que nosotros no somos nuestros cuerpos, pero somos seres espirituales teniendo una experiencia aquí en la Tierra, humana. Y sin embargo, lo que pasa en el planeta Tierra importa. Importa tanto que Dios se encarnó en Jesús para venir a este mundo. Would you pray with me? Puede orar conmigo. Oh, God of love, God of justice, God of grace. Um, we give you thanks for another day of life and we ask that you open our spiritual ears and that you open our spiritual eyes so that we can hear and we can see what is it that you're asking us to do as followers of Jesus so that the world can be all that you have created it to be. Oh, Dios de amor, Dios de justicia, Dios de gracia, te damos gracias por otro día más de vida. Y te pedimos que abra nuestros oídos espirituales, que abra nuestros ojos espirituales para que podamos escuchar, para que podamos ver qué es lo que quieres que hagamos todas las personas juntas, para que el mundo sea todo lo que tú lo creaste para hacer. Amén. So, last Sunday for Pentecost, I preached about how all, all people who are alive have the Holy Spirit. Uh, we read in the Hebrew scripture how God put the spirit in human nostrils in every single one of us in Genesis. So, of course, we're family. <laughs> and it is not a kumbaya type of idea, you know, let's all hold hands and get along and pretend we're all the same. But it's a deeper theological truth. And yet many times we behave in ways that don't reflect the Imago Dei within us, let alone the Imago Dei in others. El domingo pasado para Pentecostés prediqué sobre cómo todas las personas que estamos vivas tenemos el Espíritu Santo uh, dentro de nosotras. Leemos en las Escrituras Hebreas, en el libro de Génesis, cómo Dios puso su Espíritu en nuestras fosas nasales, en cada persona. Entonces, por supuesto que somos una gran familia, pero, pero no, es una, no es una idea que es como vamos a cantar con vaya y tomándote las manos y va a estar todo bien, aunque seamos diferentes, sino es una verdad teológica mucho más profunda. Y sin embargo, muchas veces nosotros mismos no actuamos en maneras que reflejan esta imagen de Dios dentro de nosotros, mucho menos la imagen de Dios en otras personas. I'm not even talking about what the government of Israel is doing to the people of Palestine. I'm not talking about what the government of the U.S. is doing to migrant kids. And yes, even Democrat leaders do these things. Or I'm not talking about what the legislator here in Iowa is doing to children, uh, to black and indigenous people of color, to trans people. I'm talking about our daily interactions at home, at work, at school, and yes, even at church. No estoy hablando de lo que el gobierno de Israel está haciendo a la gente de Palestina, o lo que el gobierno de Estados Unidos le está haciendo a niños migrantes, aunque sean líderes democráticos ahorita. O, o no estoy hablando tampoco de lo, lo que la, el Congreso aquí en Iowa está haciendo a, a los niños, a, a gente indígena, gente de color, gente trans. Estoy hablando sobre nuestras interacciones diarias en nuestra casa, en el trabajo, en la escuela, e incluso en las iglesias. You know, when Jesus said the first commandment is to love God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind, and the second is to love your neighbor as yourselves, we focus so much on loving our neighbor and figuring out, you know, who our neighbor is, that we miss that the prerequisite for loving our neighbor is to love ourselves. Cuando Jesús dijo el mandamiento más importante es amar a Dios con toda su mente, con todo su corazón, con toda su alma, y el segundo es amar al prójimo como a sí mismo, nos enfocamos tanto en amar al prójimo, en pensar y entender quién es nuestro prójimo, que se nos olvidó que un prerequisito para amar al prójimo es amarnos a nosotros mismos primero. Could you imagine how the world would be a different place if we all love ourselves, like truly love ourselves? Not in a type of narcissistic, hedonistic way, but, but in a healthy way. You know, remember that God created us. And if we would see ourselves the way God sees us. ¿Se imaginan cómo sería el mundo diferente si todas las personas nos amáramos a nosotras mismas? Como realmente amarnos, no de una forma narcisista o hedonista, sino en una forma sana, recordando que fuimos creados por Dios. Recordando que vernos como Dios nos ve. The Hebrew Bible 
uh, reading today from Isaiah remind us that God will give us instruction. And I think the church needs to confess and needs to repent for the mediocre job we're doing in sharing Jesus' teachings. La lectura de Isaías hoy en la Biblia Hebrea nos recuerda que Dios nos va a dar instrucciones. Y creo que como iglesia tenemos que confesar y arrepentirnos por el trabajo mediocre que hemos hecho en compartir las enseñanzas de Jesús. You know, for some reason, people think that they come to church on Sunday to recharge their batteries, right? At best, they would come Wednesday and Sunday. But the reality is that every single person needs to recharge their batteries every single day. And then we gather, and you know, whenever and wherever we gather, we come with the batteries already charged, and we're able to do so much more together. We need a daily connection with God. Following Jesus, in case you haven't realized, is not easy nor popular. And so we do it collectively because with the batteries already charged, we could do so much more. Por alguna razón, la gente piensa que tiene que venir al domingo a la iglesia a recargar sus pilas. Algunas personas vienen miércoles y domingo a recargar sus pilas. Pero la realidad es que necesitamos recargar nuestras pilas todos los días. Y luego cuando nos juntamos todas las personas, cuando sea que nos juntemos o donde sea que nos juntemos, venimos con nuestras pilas ya cargadas y podemos hacer mucho más juntos. Necesitamos esa conexión diaria con Dios. No sé si se ha fijado, pero seguir a Jesús no es fácil, ni tampoco es popular. Y, y, y es por eso que lo hacemos colectivamente. Lo hacemos todas las personas juntos con todas nuestras bateri baterías recargadas. Because then, it is not about what I need from the church, but it's how can I serve, how can I help, how can we all serve, how can we all help. And it goes without saying that there will be definitely times when we would need the church. And this type of church will be there for us. We need church for support and for accountability. Porque entonces al final no se trata de qué es lo que yo necesito de la iglesia, cómo me puede ayudar la iglesia, sino es cómo puedo yo servir, cómo puedo ayudar, cómo nosotras, todas las personas, podemos servir y ayudar. Y por supuesto, va a haber tiempos en que necesitemos de la, que la iglesia nos ayude. Y ese tipo de iglesia va a estar allí para nosotros. Necesitamos congregarnos en iglesia para tener apoyo y para que nos ven, vayan guiando por dónde hay que ir. So, if we go back to the Gospels, we see time and time again that Jesus had a deep life of prayer. And out of that prayer connection with God, Jesus would go out into the world and work for justice. In case you haven't realized, working for justice is hard work. So we'll need more prayer. And then we'll be more energized. And then we'll go back. And then we'll need more prayer. And it's a cycle. Si vamos a ver los evangelios, vemos una y otra vez que Jesús tenía una conexión diaria con Dios, de, de, una conexión de oración. Y luego, por fruto de esa conexión, Jesús salía e iba a trabajar al mundo para hacer justicia. Si no se ha fijado, trabajar por justicia es algo difícil. Entonces necesitamos más oraciones. Y luego, esas oraciones, esa conexión con Dios nos va a dar más fuerza para salir y seguir trabajando. Y, y es un ciclo. So, in my experience, prayer is how we connect with God. And that could be, you know, what most people think when they hear the word prayer. It could be meditating. It could be doing yoga, tai chi, coloring, journaling, dancing, singing, reading scripture, exercising, walking in nature. You know, what, in whatever way you communicate with the divine, that's prayer. En mi experiencia, oración es como nos conectamos con Dios. Y oración puede ser lo que la mayoría de gente piensa cuando escucha la palabra oración, o, o puede ser meditar, hacer yoga, hacer tai chi, colorear, escribir, bailar, cantar, leer escritura, hacer ejercicio, caminar en la naturaleza, de la forma en que usted se conecte con Dios. Eso, eso es oración. It is important to remember, though, that communication is a two-way street. It is important to listen, right? I always find interesting when people say like, oh, you know, I don't go to church. I can never go to nature. And I said, cool, I, I like that too. Uh, of course, I go to church as well, but I also like to connect with God in nature. But may I ask you something? And they said, yeah, yeah, sure. And so I said, what did God tell you? And they look at me like, what? What do you mean? Well, you said you connect with God in nature, right? And so what, what did God say? And people are like, huh? Recuerden que la comunicación es una calle de dos vías, de doble vía. Es importante escuchar también. Me parece interesante que a veces la gente me dice, ah, yo no voy a la iglesia porque yo me conecto con Dios en la naturaleza. Y yo digo, ah, me parece perfecto, yo también me conecto con Dios en la naturaleza. Y bueno, también voy a la iglesia, pero sí experimento Dios en la naturaleza. Pero, pero puedo preguntarle algo. Y la gente dice, sí, sí, seguro. Entonces yo le digo, ¿qué le dijo Dios? 
Y me dicen, ¿ah? Sí, usted dice que se conecta con Dios en la naturaleza. Entonces, ¿qué le dijo Dios? Y la gente se queda como, no entiende. So, in my experience, it's really hard to have a real connection with God and not be propelled to go out into the world and work to make it a better place. It's just a byproduct, right? We, we connect with God, with the divine, and out of that connection, we just go out into the world. En mi experiencia, es muy difícil no tener una verdadera conexión con Dios y fruto de esa conexión, ir afuera a trabajar para hacer el mundo un mejor lugar. Es, es como un producto añadido, como pasa sin que lo, sin que lo planeemos. So, and in the church, we're a big family. And regardless of denomination, so-called conservative people focus so much on the person's relationship with God, you know, what John Wesley called personal holiness. But many times they stop there. The world could be upside down. You know, my neighbor, my, the person next door could be hungry, but oh, you know, those things doesn't matter. I'm tied with Jesus. I pray to God every day, so all is fine. On the other hand, on the other hand, so-called progressive people are worried, and you know, rightly so, for all the injustices that are happening in the world, that they go out and organize campaigns, marches, protests, demand injustice, you know, what John Wesley calls social holiness. But at times it seems as if they forget the reason why they do these things and make the church look like a nonprofit. Entonces, en la iglesia somos una gran familia y sin importar la denominación, gente que se le llama conservadora, se enfoca tanto en una relación personal con Dios, lo que John Wesley llamaba la santidad personal, pero muchas veces paran allí. El mundo puede ser que esté de cabeza. Mi vecino, la persona que vive a mi par, puede ser que tenga hambre. Pero, ah, esa cosa no importa. Porque yo estoy bien con Jesús, yo oro a Dios todos los días y ahí está todo bien. Del otro lado, la gente que se llama progresista está preocupada y con razón por todas las injusticias que pasan, que organizan campañas, marchas, protestas, demandan justicia. Lo que John Wesley llamaba la uh, santidad social. Pero a veces parece que olvidaron la razón por la cual hacen las cosas estas y, y hacen que la iglesia parezca una ONG. No, I, I have nothing against nonprofits. Uh, they could do great work. And as a cultural anthropologist, I, I've worked with many nonprofits. I just think that when church is done right, it's way better. You know, when church doing Jesus style. Yo no tengo nada en contra de las ONGs. Pueden hacer un buen trabajo. De hecho, como antropólogo cultural, he trabajado con muchas ONGs. Pero yo creo que la iglesia, si se hace bien, puede ser mejor. Como lo hacemos como el estilo de Jesús. So Jesus taught us by example. Jesus preached, but Jesus also embodied his teachings. Jesus taught us to have a life of action and contemplation. Jesus was a mystic and a mystic that went into the world. Jesus didn't stay in the clouds, you know, like reach nirvana and forget what happened on earth. Jesus' actions were based on love and whether it was healing, turning tables, or giving his life as an act of solidarity with the oppressed and marginalized people. It was always love at the root of his actions. Jesus nos enseñó con el ejemplo. Jesús predicaba, Jesús enseñaba, pero también encarnaba lo que nos enseñaba. Jesús era un místico, y un místico que no se quedaba así nada más en conexión con Dios, sino un místico que iba al mundo. No se quedaba como alcancé nirvana y ya todo está bien. Y se le olvida lo que pasa en la tierra. Las, las acciones de Jesús siempre estaban basadas en amor, ya sea que fuera sanando gente, que estuviera volteando mesas, que estuviera dando su vida como un acto de solidaridad con las personas oprimidas y marginalizadas. And so it's important to remember that Jesus didn't do all these things by himself. He had a group, you know, way bigger than 12 people, because Jesus knew that we can accomplish much more than we all work together. Es importante recordar que Jesús no hizo todo solo. Tenía un grupo de gente con que trabajaba mucho más que 12 personas. Jesús sabía que podemos alcanzar mucho más cuando trabajamos juntas todas las personas. So, it is my prayer today that all of us, being mindful of God's Holy Spirit that's been breathed in us, we can have that daily connection with God that will help us to love ourselves and love our neighbors. And then we can work together so that God's love, justice, and peace can be a reality for every being on this planet. Es mi oración el día de hoy que estemos conscientes del Espíritu Santo de Dios que tenemos, que ha sido respirado dentro de nosotros, para que tengamos esa conexión diaria con Dios, 
que nos ayude a amarnos a nosotras mismas, amar a los vecinos, y luego que podamos trabajar juntas todas las personas para que el amor de Dios, la justicia de Dios, la paz de Dios, sea una realidad para todos los seres en este planeta. Amén. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Alejandro. Powerful word, powerful word. Thank you for the reminder of what love looks like and means tangibly in ourselves and in the world. Amen. And now I'll turn it to uh, Dr. Jesse Smith for the time of offering. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor Alejandro. Today we are receiving a special offering for Peace with Justice Sunday. Half of the gifts collected from across the denomination will be distributed in global programs by church and society. The other half remains in your annual conference to support local efforts. As we consider what it means to seek peace with justice with our siblings and to address unjust systems, today we have an opportunity to be part of the United Methodist family by sharing from our own abundance. When you give generously on Peace with Justice Sunday, your gift becomes a voice for advocacy around the world. Together, we strengthen God's family with ministries that challenge structures of inequality and engage people and communities for systemic change. There are two ways you can give to this special Sunday offering. First, you can give through your local church and indicate in the memo line that it is for Peace with Justice Sunday. The other option is to give online through the link found here on the screen, umc.org backslash ssgive. If you choose to give through the UMC giving portal, you will need to select from a drop-down menu, Peace with Justice Sunday, and then follow the prompts to complete your donation. We invite you now to prayerfully consider a donation. Let us pray. We present our offerings in the name of Abba, Son, and Holy Spirit. Triune God who mothers us all, bless and multiply these gifts as they join with those across the United Methodist family to bring peace with justice to all of your children. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, we give thanks for the service today, the word brought by Reverend Alejandro and the tangible meaning, meaning of peace with justice. So now let us go in the peace uh, and receive this benediction. And now go into the world led by the spirit, glimpse the image of God revealed in each of us, each person and offer our siblings the peace of Christ, reflecting God's love and justice. Amen. May we go in peace. <laughs>